Okay, so I've got the ladder. We're going around this side of the barn because I'm gonna fix the siding. We're winterizing and getting everything ready for all the goat babies. So hey guys, good morning. It's not good morning. That's not true. It's good afternoon. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. We are working on the farm here. I think this is gonna be the last day, maybe, that we're able to wear shorts around here. Yeah, we're moving into sweater weather. Major temperature drop coming tomorrow. It's very pleasant today, but what we're doing uh, is we're shifting things around. So it's, it's is it disheveled? Shuffle, disheveled, disheveled. I don't know, whatever. But welcome back to the channel. Uh, what I'm currently doing, what we're currently doing, is we've got all these goats, and every single girl that's out here is having bibbies, bibby. Uh, exactly when, we're not exactly sure, but we're trying to start preparing and changing things. Don't nibble. Don't nibble. Ha. I'm locking you out, cowboy. Maybe not. Hang on. Ah! Okay, so. <laughs> the last time we talked about this, I was telling you that we were going to be putting in, uh, trying to make sort of some makeshift stalls in the large overhang where all of my goats kind of sort of live, you know. They love this part of the barn because... Uh, they can come in, they have full shade, they get some wind, um, and they're protected predominantly from the rain. We've got a few holes in that old roof up there, you know, way up yonder. Um, but overall, we do pretty well on the side of the barn, and they love to look out. So this is sort of the goat haven. So what we've done, this is just a suggestion, and there's good news and bad news about this. So for many years, we have made dog kennels pretty much our best friends. These are the 10 by 10s. A lot of you have them too. You use them for runs for your chickens or if you have perhaps livestock guardian dogs like we do, but they're young. So you like to kind of put them up, but they're next to everything. Very versatile. You can use them for chickens. I've used them for just about every animal other than a cow or a bull. We've used it in some type of capacity for something. So instead of making permanent stalls in this overhang, I decided to go on and use kennels again. Now over here, I've got an older kennel. Part of it is kind of torn up. I told you that before because we had a bull uh, and he came over on this side of the property and he came over here and he was like, hey, let's play, let's have fun. And I'm telling you, it didn't take but one afternoon and he tore the out of it, okay? So just know that, that when you're working with uh, cattle of any sort, they are so strong, they can really do a lot of damage a whole very a whole lot quicker than anything else. So I don't want to put permanent stalls, um, posts in and build this because it's a lot harder to, well, it's more expensive, prop maybe. I'll get to that. Um, and, but you know, it's pretty permanent to a degree. So these are nice because you know, you can just take them down. I mean, you can take them down, you can move them. So what I'm gonna be doing with this one is I'm probably gonna end up putting maybe two girls in here and then I'm gonna cover the front um, when I think we're close to having goat kids. Now here's the problem with that. The problem is, hey buddy, Papa Bear has done a, Papa Bear right here. He's done a tremendous job. Uh, we do think all of the girls that have been out with him, I'm just gonna stand in here because they'll try to nibble my shirt and everything else. Um, the, the issue is, is I think we have different girls that were obviously bred at different times. So the first date that I'm really starting to look at as a potential start, a kickoff <laughs> for my nurseries uh, is gonna be around the 27th. So we have, in my opinion, give or take about two more weeks. I could be off, I could be wrong. I mean, you know, this is all about mother nature and what she wants, not about, it's not about me. Um, because we put them out. That's what makes all the girls love you, huh? Learn something, guys. <laughs> but 
here's what I'm saying. So we've got all these girls out here, and I do think we have two issues. Number one, like I've said before, we don't know exactly when all of them were bred. So I could start having goat babies. Let's just say it's October 27th or Halloween or November 1st, whatever. Two or three of them may pop those babies right on out. Uh, but then again, I've got more, and they may not have babies until December. So it's going to be a daily watch game, heavy, heavy watch game starting in the next two weeks. So what I've been trying to do is create these stalls, clean up the stalls in there, because basically what I'm going to start doing is trying to make be my best judgment calls in terms of moving them into stalls because ideally I don't want them having babies out in the field. Now, if we were in the middle of summer and it was, you know, 85 degrees and they were kind of over here by themselves, I wouldn't be as anal about it. Every baby goat, goat kid, okay, every baby that I've ever had that has been dropped in the late spring through the summer all made it. And the reason for that, so if you've never had baby goats, I'm teaching you this. I hope you know this. Okay, so... A lot of times goats, particularly Nubians or Nubian crosses, they go into heat typically September, October, November, which means a lot of people have goat kids around, you know, January, February, March. Typically it's very cold in a lot of places in the United States. Not all. I mean, I understand Arizona and Florida is not going to necessarily experience the weather that we are. Um, but, you know, I've had some losses over the years because I had new mamas that started dropping babies uh, when, it, when the weather got really cold and I didn't catch it in time or I missed it by even just a few minutes and the babies can die. So you want to try to secure as best you can the area that your goat mamas are when you think they're best li or most likely to start going into labor, okay, birthing the babies. That way, they are isolated, they are protected, hopefully they are shielded from wind and cold, they've got fresh bedding, which I don't have down yet, I mean, we're not there yet. Um, and you can monitor them to make sure that the mama is doing her best to clean them, warm them, warm them up, maybe they will start nursing very quickly, get the colostrum, that's what's going to keep them alive. If those things, particularly when the weather cools down, uh, I would say gets well below 40 to 50. I mean, clearly, if you get below freezing, you're in a much bigger danger zone. They'll, they freeze very quickly. I'm sorry to say that. It's it's sad and it's, it's so sad to find that, but it does happen. So I've learned the hard way. Many of you have too. So I'm just saying, if you know for a fact that you have any animal, particularly, but specifically goats, um, baby chicks, I mean, even when they hatch, you want them in a warm, safe, close-knit environment so they can be protected, they can stand, they can be warm, they're not chilled, um, and so it's, it's the same thing. So that's what we're doing. So we're making more spots to possibly put the girls in to keep them safe, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this may end up being my milking stall. Um, I would prefer it be in here away from what's all this, all the crazy in the barn, but we don't know. But what I do want to tell you before I go to the next clip, I was going to buy two of these. Remember I said that I was going to put um, a new one over there and a new one over here. The last time I bought one of these, this is the 10 by 10, six feet tall, 10 by 10 basic dog kennel. Okay. Nothing. It's got the door over here. It's got four panels. Um, I paid $199. Guess what I paid this time? 370. Yeah. So there's that, that's to be expected. So here's where I'm going with this. We're going to use what we've got to make this one more stable um, and to put the wood back on it and clean it up and leave it as is. And so we only got one for now. This is that moment where I tell people Homesteading is not for free. Farming is not for free. You must make sure that you try to continue to have some source of an income, whether it's selling your products, um, keeping your job, because guys, none of it is free. Tolly, you all have seen movement in some of the videos. She's so pretty, she's so pretty. She's very, very big. I think she's gonna have triplets. That's a prediction of mine. It doesn't mean that I'm accurate. 
she does have a missing part of her ear there. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I got in a little scuffle two years ago. I lost a little ear there. Um, but here's the thing. Um, just because they get really, really big doesn't mean anything. She may just be having, oh, honey, one big baby. Whereas somebody like Sho Sho, these are, these are from the, the, these are sisters, full sisters. Sho Sho is very little. Maybe she's having one. Maybe she's having three. Who's to know? Okay, two socks, you're not pregnant. Tolly, uh, you look like a tank there, girlfriend. Uh, no baby. Look at all these weathers. This is why everybody loves having weathers. Weathers are basically goats that got that are that were bucklings, and we took their walnuts, right? We, I took your walnuts. I'm so sorry. I took your walnuts. But you're such a sweetheart, and you take care of everybody. Mike and Vinny. And Joey, you're so sweet. All you fellas are so sweet. Okay, Bibi, how you doing, Bibi? She's a little bit ornery, y'all. I'm really watching her. You know, she was a bottle baby for a long time in the house. Where you going, girl? Why are you running? Don't run away from motherhood, Bibi. Turkey. All right. Keep going. Keep that booty going, girlfriend. Oh, we got the view of a lifetime. Okay, so if you're wondering what we're doing right now, we're gonna be mowing some of the field. Not all of our fields, but particular areas because it's got some really high brush. So what we've done is we've moved the cows over one more paddock, gave them a little extra food because clearly they look like they like food. <laughs> uh, and then um, the goats and every the dog, everybody's up. So this field doesn't have any, anything in it right now except for us. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna mow this down because should a goat girl go into labor and she's over here, she might try to hunker down over here. From the barn, you can't see what's going on down here. It's gotten so high. We got all kinds of things in here. Got all kinds of things. So we're gonna take this down. I think we've got a, all kinds of different brush and trees and brambles and all kinds of things. So we're just gonna knock this down so it's a clear view. So I want you to see how thick this is. So if something were to come in here and bed down, there's no way that we would see that. And so we want to make sure that we just got it taken down. Now that we're in the final days of mowing, we'll probably mow after today. We might mow two more times this year. We'll probably be done. You can see exactly why we always have to move the animals out of the field. It's not just because we're blowing dust around or debris or anything like that. That's obvious, but some of the animals get really, really excited, uh, particularly cows. When you're coming in with, say, a, a tractor or a lawnmower, I think that they get excited because they're assuming you're going to be bringing in fresh hay. At least that's been our experience. And they jump around, they'll buck. They're not aggressive, but they play and they can easily stomp you. Um, so we've learned again to, anytime we think we're gonna be doing some work, using equipment, things like that, you've got to get the animals out of the field. Okay, so I'm just gonna sit in here for a second because I think you can hear me a little bit better. So he's gonna finish that up and then I will help move the cows and all of that in just a minute after we film. But this is basically what we're doing right now. Ooh, it's hot in here. Um, we are obviously into the middle of October, so we're really getting down to crunch time. So some of the other things that I'm going to have to make sure that I've got, I've already made sure that I have um, straw and we're gonna be bringing in more straw for bedding. 
Uh, we have diatomaceous earth for, I like to put down DE. Anytime I'm putting down fresh bedding, regardless, I like to put down a little bit of DE just to know that I did that. It kind of dries things out, keeps parasites down. So there's that. Um, I need to go and get my bottles. Now, I already have the actual nipples. You can buy nipples. If you're... If your thought is, I'm, I'm going to have all these goat babies and the mamas are going to raise them and we're not going to have an issue, I'm telling you right now, you will have an issue. You will probably have um, issues in places that you never thought that you would. You probably will have a demise of some sort. hate to say that, but go ahead and mentally process that. It happens. Um, you also will have maybe a mama that doesn't produce a whole lot of milk, especially if she's a new mama. That happens. Um, you may have a situation where you have a rejection. All I've been through all of these things, just like a lot of you have. So you have to prepare for that. So I have all of my nipples. I'll buy the actual separate little nipples, um, for goat kids and lambs. Um, I actually like to use diet Coke little bottles. What are they? Are they 16 ounces, 12 ounces? I can't remember now. Um, that is actually my favorite. You can, a lot of people use Coke or Dr. Pepper or, uh, Mountain Dew, whatever, but a, a, a pop, Coke, we call them Coke. But actually, I found for whatever reason, Diet Dr. Pepper, <laughs> the bottles, uh, maybe Dr. Pepper is the same, but I just buy Diet Dr. Pepper because it works great. Um, and I'm going to buy two six packs, okay, to have bottles ready to go. They won't drink the Dr. Pepper, but they will drink my homemade formula, which is going to be uh, consisting of whole milk. A lot of people use just plain whole milk. I have a whole video or two on this, okay? But whole milk is the basis, and then you can add buttermilk and, of course, your evaporated milk. So making sure I have all of that, uh, molasses, um, and... Um, colostrum is in the freezer in case I need it. Hopefully I won't need it. Um, but you have to start going through your checklist of items. So that's where I'm at now. So I've been accumulating things. Now we're to the point of making sure the final checklist is done. Uh, towels, blankets, um, emergency items, all the things that you have in your emergency uh, vet kit, because you do have that. I know you do. So this is what we're doing right now. So basically we're getting ready for baby. It's the end of fall prep going into winter, but it's also making sure that we're ready for goat babies. Um, and it's just going to be a watch. Like I told my mother, you know, the other day, I'm like, you know, this could start at the end of October. It could go all the way into December, depending upon when, you know, happiness was happening between <laughs> my buck uh, rip and uh, particular girls. So we're going to keep you posted, but a lot of exciting things, you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'll take a prayer. Um, you know, I do plan. You just have to plan for a, a lot of overwhelming moments. So the best thing to do is to work ahead and know at a certain date that you're probably going to have to start moving goat girls in, in my personal opinion and experience. Some people just let them do whatever they're going to do. That's fine, but I know that cold weather is moving in starting tomorrow. Um, and honest to Pete, these goat kids in many ways cannot compete with that, so you have to prepare for that. Hope this video finds you well. We're busy, 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 trying to get everything cleaned up and ready to go every single day. It's not just about preparedness in your home. It's also about preparedness in your, on your farm and in your barn because these beautiful little critters uh, is sustainability for all of us. And hopefully, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, the raw milk will be flowing here again. So we'll just have to wait and see. Who will it be? I've got my eye on a couple that uh, look to be developing really nicely in terms of the udder and uh, everything else. But again, we'll find out. We'll keep you posted. Like, subscribe, and share. Have a great weekend. Stay positive and stay very, very busy. Your self-sustainability and your preparedness comes in many, many ways. And you have to continue to prepare all the time. Like, subscribe, and share. Appreciate you. Have a good weekend. We'll see you on the next video. Godspeed and love you like a little pig. <laughs>